I bought this Mac Pro. It is quite old, very old by computer standards. So why, oh why, would I buy a 13 year old Macintosh? Because it was $150. I like and overly romanticize this silver age of Apple and I, I don't have much self-control. Man, I just love how this thing is engineered. I mean, look at that. Getting into this machine is so incredibly easy. In my defense, I do my video editing using Final Cut Pro X 10 on my 2015 MacBook Pro, which is a great computer and it's quite powerful and generally works well but occasionally just starts stuttering, and I usually have to reboot my machine to fix it. I figured 16 gigabytes couldn't really cut it today. Apparently Apple thinks differently. But these old machines with dual CPUs can go up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, which helps justify the purchase. Plus, it's the only way I could get what I would consider a good amount of RAM in 2023 in a Mac for less than three grand. I also did a quick search on YouTube to see if anyone had upgraded one recently and couldn't find much. That recently is important for reasons I'll get to later. Long story short, can you upgrade the classic Mac Pro to decent specs running a modern OS? Yes. You have to use OpenCore or some other workaround to get anything beyond High Sierra working, and it doesn't have all the features, but you can do it. You could also just use it with High Sierra. Relatively, the easy way is to use OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Long story short, you use the patcher to create a custom installer with a special bootloader to act as a kind of intermediary compatibility injector for modern macOS. You boot into that through the firmware and you run the installer. Finally, you install that bootloader onto your boot drive. It's a straightforward process. I say relatively and straightforward because it is not easy. Looking through my captured videos of the process, you'll see a bunch of them include fail in the title. In my opinion, there are two main reasons for this difficulty. One, Apple has always designed their machines to be a performant and seamless experience for their end user. In 2023, I am not the end user of this Mac. And when you design specific hardware and software to work well, you end up trading away flexibility. I would argue this is more prominent with recent Apple devices. I know older developers who argue otherwise. Second, and more importantly, it's old. For computers, it's so old. It's easy to lose track of how much has changed in a relatively short time. This Mac Pro uses a custom EFI boot, which preceded UFE and all the standards we're used to today. I mean, the boot system needs a GPU with custom firmware to display anything. The USB ports are USB 2. It uses PCIe 2 channels. It has Firewire ports. Naturally, this causes difficulties. I personally don't want to run a spinning disk boot drive and the NVIDIA Quadro GPU it came with especially when I have an SSD and an RX 480 just sitting in my tech pile. But the RX 480 doesn't have the firmware to display the boot process, and for some reason my SSD doesn't mount when the computer restarts. I still haven't fixed that. The injected open core bootloader is supposed to work with my GPU, but still, I came across a lot of blank screens and even more prohibited screens. That said, I eventually got everything to work by first installing High Sierra normally with the SSD and the supported GPU, then swapping to the RX 480 and using that final configuration to create the Open Core Ventura installer, then installing. Whenever the installer spat out the prohibited screen, a result of trying to restart the machine and failing to mount the boot drive, I just forcibly power cycled it using the power button. And it works! Pretty nicely, too. It's not the most powerful. Processing power really has exploded in the last few years, but it's decent. I can edit my videos, though I do worry Apple will be angry at me for running macOS on a Macintosh that's too old and will deactivate my account. Which brings us to the second question. Should you 
buy and upgrade an old Mac Pro to use as a workstation? No. It took me a couple days of working on this thing, off and on, making several custom USB installers, running software from who knows where, to get this thing working. It's not the worst thing I've ever had to build, but I've worked as a computer engineer. That's not a good metric. By comparison, here's how long it took me to get my M1 Mac Mini working. It's so easy. And I looked it up. Apparently Final Cut can run just fine on 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM. And you know, the new drives and peripherals are so fast, you can probably shuffle data in and out without much of a performance hit. Which means this venture, strictly speaking, wasn't necessary or useful. Apple still does a good job of designing and building their machines to work with their operating system. It's expensive. Good engineers are expensive. Writing good software is hard. Each unit of engineering effort can either make something work well or make it versatile. If you want both, then the required effort expands exponentially. And as much as I love this design, how easy it is to expand and upgrade, there are legitimate reasons for closing off a computer system like Apple has. Like security. The more moving parts you have, the more attack surfaces there are. OpenCore is a bunch of bootstrapping software from who knows where that can manipulate core components of the OS. Even if it isn't malicious, it's still a huge security risk. On the flip side, running an old operating system means turning a blind eye to vulnerabilities that got patched in newer versions of macOS. Running old machines means turning a blind eye to hardware vulnerabilities that got fixed in the new machines. I mean, the Intel chips in these machines had a huge vulnerability in the boot process, which got patched out in 2013. Doesn't mean the threat's gone. More generally, macOS is moving on from Intel. Every year features are dropped, and as of now, the entire Mac lineup uses Apple Silicon. The Mac Pro was the last standout. There are probably only a couple more years before Mac OS doesn't support Intel at all. Then I have no choice but to run an increasingly obsolete operating system and hardware. If you like tinkering with computers, you long to revisit these old machines by all means. It's a fun project with a decent deliverable at the end. There's no way I'd shell out for a modern Mac with 128 gigabytes of RAM or unified memory or whatever. It's unnecessary overkill, but it's fun unnecessary overkill. If you want something to actually use, and even more if you want something you can depend on, you should probably just buy the best Apple Silicon Mac you can afford. Let go of the drawbacks and move on with life. I'm still figuring out how to do that. <laughs>